That, my friends, is a five iron. And that is a five hybrid. And one of them is far better than the other in many more ways than you'd actually think. Let me explain. You see, I've done many videos on this channel, almost getting to the point of where maybe I go on about it a little bit too much. And that is the beneficial of a, or benefit rather, of a hybrid over a long iron equivalent in the bag for many average golfers. But there's a but, because the i525s from Ping changed my opinion a little, because their five iron, their long end irons in the bag that I tested were so impressive that I actually started to question whether or not I changed my mind and whether or not long irons were now just as playable as hybrids. And today, I'm gonna to put that theory to the test. And the first thing I wanna say this morning is just how impressed I am with this Stealth 5 Hybrid. I've never played this club until I arrived this morning and I am super impressed with its performance. It's incredible. It just does everything that an average golfer needs. Plenty of assistance, helping launch, fast ball speed, just gets the ball out there with the easiest of swings. I am super impressed with this thing. You see, my theory has always been quite simple. Average golfers struggle to use long irons. So my, a lot of the videos that we've uh, put together in recent years have been suggesting that we sort of stop at five iron, perhaps being the longest iron in the bag. And then you look to switch over to either hybrids or fairway woods to make this game just a little bit simpler. The i525 came along, I played long irons, easier than I've ever done, launched the ball incredibly well, and like I've already just said, questioned that theory. But ultimately, we'll end up back here and looking at data to explain the difference between these two clubs. And the two clubs in question are the TaylorMade Stealth 5 Hybrid and the i525 5 Iron. There's one degree difference in terms of loft. The loft on the five hybrid is 25 degrees and a slightly stronger loft in this case comes from the iron at 24 degrees. So we already know we should be expecting to see certain things, but will we? But before we get into the data, I just wanna give a simple explanation of how these two clubs feel at address over the ball in the most simple of situations and just playing some golf and hitting some balls. Right, so I'm going to kick things off with um, a very simple, I'm going to hit some balls and I'm going to give you my feedback on how sort of playable each of the clubs are. Forgetting about performance, first of all, just an immediate response to how I feel at address, what kind of shots we can play with each of the clubs and how I think they differ in terms of performance. We'll kick things off with this hybrid, which is, first of all, looks superb. Uh, it's a stunning looking club. I think what Stealth has done this year, and I'm a fan of the driver, but I love the whole range in terms of the fairways and the hybrids look so good from the top line. The first thing I've got is confidence at address. I've got a fairly short shaft in hand. I've got a bit of bulk and mass at the end of it, little head there that's suggesting I don't need to do a great deal to get this ball out there. So let's have our first strike. Well, first of all, that's carrying for miles and for the target we've got set up might be just a little bit too long. I can't believe, I've obviously collected data um, already this morning and I cannot believe just how far this thing flies. 25 degrees, don't forget, in terms of its loft. It's a lot weaker than, I generally play a three or four hybrid, never played a five hybrid before. But distance wise, this is going as far as a three or a four hybrid that I've played in the past. Let's try one more, take a little bit off this one. Oh, now that's a good strike. Higher ball flight, coming down, I would think. Yeah, it's a lot better. In fact, we take that any day of the week. Right, let's change that over and go straight into the five iron. Now this five iron has been so impressive um, so far. And I say the five iron, this is the i525, don't forget. I was impressed with the iron set in general, but in terms of long end of the bag, long irons are difficult for average golfers to play. Um, any, well, as soon as we start to lose a bit of loft, then there's a struggle. This five iron is 24 degrees. So when this whole video, let's not forget, there's one degrees worth of difference and this being the stronger lofted. So in theory, 
should be traveling further. But again, what is the first thought at address? Well, I've got a long iron in hand. It's a fairly, this isn't, the i525 is a player's distance iron. It's not a really thin top line, but you know, I'm not seeing a lot of the back end of the club. In fact, I'm seeing none of it at this five end, minimal offset. I'm thinking to myself, I'm stood over a par three, 200 yards in. Do I really fancy this five iron and how much confidence have I got? Not a great deal, but anyway, let's have a go. Okay, that's all right. That's not a bad strike. Well, Leakin pushed it a bit out to the right-hand side. We're not quite going to reach the water, but we've certainly gone out right. It fired out there, and the big, the most impressive thing for me, again, is the sort of uh, ease of use is maybe the wrong terminology, but I'm so impressed at how these pink irons fire the ball out. So again, let's see if we can uh, get a little bit better strike on this one. That's better in terms of line, similar in terms of distance. And again, more than happy. I'd take that performance all day long with a long iron. And like I said, I will not be criticizing anything about the performance of the i 525 in this video. Just beware. My whole purpose of this video is trying to decide whether or not how much more benefit there is to have a five hybrid or a lofted hybrid similar to that to replace your long iron. We've done a lot of these videos in the past, but particularly in the event of this new i525 coming out and being so impressed with the long irons, also impressed with the, uh, the performance out of these hybrids from TaylorMade, I thought it'd be good to do a sort of up-to-date version to very, very modern clubs. And I just wondered whether or not I would actually sort of start to change my mind and think, do you know what, actually, a five iron nowadays in this i525 and if they follow suit if it's as playable as this one then maybe there's a thing now the next issue is can we shape a ball always a criticism certainly of hybrid and the reason why you would go towards the kind of the uh, the iron is more playability but again from what i've seen this morning i'm pretty confident i can shift this thing with a bit of left to right with it right to left so far and see if we can get something in a little bit softer. Again, really high ball flight. This is probably the best shot of it. A little bit of left to right. And that's ever getting closer to the flag. That's with a hybrid. The clubs that, and this again bothers me in sort of like, you know, what everybody speaks about in golf is kind of like, almost like stereotype or oh, hybrid, you can't do this with it, and game improvement irons, you can't shape, and I just find it, honestly, so much nonsense at times that's, uh, that's said, and I am not a skilled golfer whatsoever, but you've just seen that ball move from left to right. It's, you know, you can shape any club in hand. Anyway, let's do it with the iron, which we're more confident, or we're more used to suggesting that this is the type of club that we can do it with. So again, take a little bit off, and a bit of a left to right. Again, got the shape, not, yeah, just a little bit weaker, took a little bit too much off that. But again, yes, we were able to move the ball. We didn't quite get the powerful um, zip out of the face that we got from the hybrid, and there lies a bit of a difference. So, just to recap on that bit, the one thing that's different above anything else is purely confidence at address. It's as simple as that. Now let's also not forget the versatility of a hybrid over an iron and there's so many more places I would suggest that you can play a hybrid so out of the rough a bit easier certainly from the fairways off the tee and even around the fringes on the green becomes a really versatile club to put in the bag. But let's not forget all that when we're considering performance benefits in terms of data. So what am I seeing in terms of performance from my perspective before I look and finalize and relay the data to you? Well, the first thing is very notably is the Stealth launches the ball higher than the five iron and one degree aloft suggests it would do that anyway, but I think it's arguably quite a bit different. And we expect that from the CG placement that's allowed in the body of the hybrid, I suppose pretty obvious. It seems to be going a lot higher. It seems to be going a lot further. 
and it's definitely a lot easier in terms of being able to get that ball up and out there. That's very obvious before we look at any kind of data. Right, so before we get into the data and decide what actually does separate these two clubs in terms of performance, I just want to say how good that Stealth Hybrid was, which I think I've already said earlier on in the video, but it really was impressive. The five hybrid, in all honesty, at 25 degrees aloft, didn't do much different than what three or four hybrid did, but got there with uh, an extremely high launch angle. And I think, again, be really good for most golfers. I think the issue is that it's very rare you get the opportunity to try a five, six, seven hybrid in most retailers. And uh, whether that's down to kind of manufacturers making them available in, in custom fit carts, I don't know, but I would like to see more of them um, with that option to try, because I reckon a lot of you would put these in the bag, but yet super club there from Stealth, really enjoyed it in that. In terms of the club's performance, let's not forget one thing here, there was one degree of difference in the hybrid being the weaker lofted. And for all the loft police out there who really get upset by strong lofted irons, I think this is a real good case in point yet again, that loft is only one ingredient in terms of how a club performs. And what you're going to see here is that the longer club was the weaker lofted and quite significantly so. So it's just a real reminder for me that, like I said, please always remember loft is not everything. Right. In terms of where the balls landed performance wise, dispersion wise is the word we like to use nowadays. They did pretty much the same thing. Um, I mean, you take a look at it. It's, you know, as I would always perform with a longer length iron uh, club hybrid in hand. In terms of the data, I'm going to throw up the two averages and then I'll throw up the full screens for everybody to analyse at the end. Um, but in terms of the averages, let's go through carry distance first of all. Significantly different, don't forget, I've just said it, weaker lofted club went 11 yards further on, uh, on average. 15.8 and 15.1 in terms of launch angle. What you'll see there is probably uh, a couple of shots when you see the data at the very end there's a couple of shots that impacted on the stealth a little bit um, in terms of bringing it down because overall i think with a couple of shots taken out that was probably more like 17 degrees launch angle but anyway ball speed 133 125 huge huge difference um, again gotta keep saying it strong lofted club was uh, ball speed nowhere near eight mile an hour huge huge difference but Spin number, 4.1 as opposed to 3,500 spin. The i525 has definitely got an issue with its spin number. There's no doubt about that. It is low, and that's a real issue. And compare that to the Stealth in terms of the hybrid. So, so different. Look at that peak height. It did say that visibly, and that's why I was trying to almost excuse the situation with the launch angle explanation, is that visibly the ball was going so much higher with the hybrid than it was the iron and as you can see there 106 to 82 sort of brings that home and then you've got the land angle so so different yet again which is an incredible difference when you're thinking about if that is an, a club that you're using to come into a green then it's a big big difference couple that with the spin number there's only one club that's performing really really well there and again it is the hybrid that said, there are different scenarios. People want different, uh, put their bags together differently. They won't want, the, if you're playing a Lynx course, you don't want a high launching ball such as the five, uh, high launching club such as the five hybrid. That wouldn't really work in your favor. And you lean towards the five iron. So I'm not saying there is one clear winner here. What I'm saying is they each perform very, very differently. And from my experience of uh, golfers in general, certainly average golfers, most of us and the majority of us would lean towards the hybrid as being as having performance characteristics that are far more useful and beneficial to us in most scenarios than the five iron so i'm going to leave it at that i've talked quite a bit in this video as i always do tend to waffle on but the point is that i always try and drill home and i've been surprised this morning because like i said there was a question mark for me as to whether or not would this five iron as it performs so so well and it does perform very well as a five iron would it now throw a question mark over everything that i've said in recent years about hybrids being the thing that we should be looking to change the answer is still no as i said hybrid is the way to go for most golfers but always remember that bit that caveat for most golfers don't get too excited some of you will still like to use a five iron all the best with it and it included me, so I don't know why I'm going on like that. I'll probably still end up with a five iron in the bag. 
Anyway, thank you for watching. Hope that made sense. Um, and I didn't waffle on too much there at the end. I, uh, give me your comments, give me your feedback, let me know what you think, and I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.